Peter Gammons joining me now live from Cincinnati, Ohio. How are you, Peter? I'm doing very well, Rich. It's, um, yeah, it's amazing for all the ones I've been to 40 something All Star games. Yep. I can't ever remember a city being as involved in a baseball All Star game as Cincinnati's been. And, you know, I realize it's the original baseball franchise, and um, they've had their great times and their bad times, but it, it really strikes me that, I mean, this town, this, Per capita, might be the best baseball city in the country. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, this 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 used to be the the place where uh, baseball opened its season every year, right? I mean, this was the first yeah. pitch of a baseball season used to take place in Cincinnati every year. Absolutely, and they had that parade. Now it's 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 been great, and it's it's been a very tough time for the Reds. Um, you know, they're going to have to probably trade off three, four, five really good players between now and the end of the season. I get that. Um, it's been a disappointment, but at the same time, I mean, their response last night to Frazier winning the home run hitting contest, I mean, it was as if they just won the World Series. And I, I like that. I like to have the town rally behind and you know, our guy that really wanted to be in it because uh, uh, that's the only city he's played in. It just made for a nice, a nice event. And, and frankly, I mean, all-star games usually are – you know, they have some nice events, but they don't they don't carry to the to the local city what this game has meant to Cincinnati. And I, I, it's just been really fun to be here. I'm on the phone with Peter Gammons, who will be part of uh, MLB Network's live All Star coverage, beginning uh, with the red carpet show today at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can also now live stream MLB Network via MLB.com at bat or MLBNetwork.com. All right, let's get to the uh, the I guess. The Pete in the room, uh, that being Pete Rose, tonight, uh, I'm sure it'll be a thunderous ovation. What did the commissioner say today about uh, Pete's uh, petition to come back into Major League Baseball? He's still going to study it more. Um, I think there's a lot more. I mean, I, it's, the, the ESPN report opened a couple more doors. I think there are other things that they will see as they reopen the Dow report. So, I mean... <clears throat> I'm pretty skeptical that he's going to get in the Hall of Fame and come back into baseball. But you know what? He was such a great player, and he was so good in Cincinnati. He's from Cincinnati. You know, whether – I mean, he is in the Hall of Fame in a way. There's so much Pete Rose memorabilia there. But at the same time, let Rose and Cincinnati enjoy this moment. I mean, and uh, I did an event with Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench on Saturday night, and um, I think that they, that they really weren't – too, too excited about the idea of discussing Pete. I felt like there there are people from Cincinnati, so therefore, so there's a way. And, and Joe and, and, and Johnny were great talking about what Pete Rose was like as a teammate, the energy he brought to the ballpark every day, and all that. You know, there's a lot to celebrate about him. It's it's unfortunate that the first rule of baseball is has to do with gambling, but um, you know, we could put that aside and honor him for what he did as a player, what he meant to the city, what he meant to the game, and then move on. And, you know, not everybody is necessarily put in the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's just as simple as that. And, and by from what you know, it, there's going to be a pregame moment where he's announced to the crowd with all, with all the – is this before or after the announcement of the lineups tonight? Do you know how it's going to work, Peter? I think it's – I think it's um, – I think they announce the lineups and then they do the um, – because they have the uh, ceremony for the uh, franchise four. And for each – the fans voted the top four players in each franchise history, and he's one of the four Reds. And that's when he'll be honored on the field before the game. And I, 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 think, it's, I think it's terrific. I, I think, again, because – I mean, for whatever else off the field, on the fields, the way he played, um, what he brought to this city, and later to Philadelphia. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget when that foul ball went off Bob Boone's glove against Kansas City in the 1980 World Series when he came racing into the first base and, and caught the foul pop to get him out of a jam. Uh, I mean, that's just the way he was. And, uh, um, you know, it's the, the, the other honors, okay, they come and go, or in some cases they can't ever come. But at the same time, he could still be remembered as one of the really extraordinary baseball players who ever played. I, and I said this the other night. 
he wasn't as good a baseball player as Joe Morgan or Johnny Bench. I mean, he had, got lots of hits. The, there are a lot of other numbers and so forth in the defensive aspect of the game. At the same time, he's such a major figure to the game. And in, in a sport that, or like all sports, more and more trouble getting um, getting access, working uh, people getting access to tickets. Uh, Rose represents every bit of the uh, working man's uh, hero. Peter Gammons, MLB Network, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. David Price, very outspoken just yesterday about uh, what he said was ridiculous, that the uh, home field advantage for the World Series is on the line tonight. Do you think that this is maybe one of the last All-Star games that will have that, or, or MLB truly does like this idea, Peter? Well, <clears throat> I think it's probably more Fox, and I, and I, again, I totally understand that. I mean, um, All-Star game ratings were going way down. They had the fiasco in 2002, but it ended up in a tie because um, – uh, Joe Torrey and Bob Brenly didn't follow the directions of uh, Sandy Alderson, the assistant commissioner, and don't run out of pitchers, use guys for two or three innings. Uh, and so they needed something to, to seemingly make the All-Star game relevant. And I think what's happened now is well, all the young players that are here, I think there are 18 first-timers on the American League team, and you look and you see you know, the biggest stars in the game, Bryce Harper, um, and, and uh, Manny Machado and, and, the, the, and Mike Trout, they're all 23 or younger. They're all at the top of wins above replacement numbers. Um, I think that the players themselves have brought the game back. And I, th I really believe, Rich, that's always happened. I mean, there was the Black Sox scandal, and Babe Ruth reinvented baseball. Um, there was the, the morbid strike, 94-95, and you know, Cal Ripken's streak, and then it came along the next spring, and then we had Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez arrive uh, in Seattle and in, in New York, and bring incredible life back into the game. And I think in the post steroid era, to see what these young players, so young, so attracted to, you know, the ten to, to, to twenty two audience, have done. I mean, I, I used a statistic yesterday. It's, I really like the adjusted OPS plus. I know it sounds very complicated, but it really gives you a measure of um, what a guy does, it, 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 how it would carry every ballpark. So it uh, sort of evens the, 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 uh, the turf for everyone. And his number right now um, is the best in baseball since Barry Bonds in 2004. And I think we'd all agree that uh, 2004 it was a different game and a different era entirely. Peter Gammons joining me here on the last couple minutes I have with you. Who, who do you think uh, is going to be gone by trade deadline uh, that's being mentioned out there as a possibility right now? I think Johnny, I think Johnny Cueto will go. Um, I think Houston's going to do everything. I think they'll be – even though he's a rental, so it's a gamble, I can also see Boston getting very much involved in it because uh, of his ties to Pedro Martinez. Um, and I know Pedro's convinced that if he gets over there, he can take the place of being Tian, Pedro Martinez, and Johnny Cueto. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. I also think uh, I think Cincinnati's going to move about three or four guys. I think they'll uh, I think they'll I think they'll move Jay Bruce as well. Uh, I don't know if there are going to be that many position players traded, uh, other than maybe a couple with Oakland, just because. Um, there are so many teams that are still in contention um, and can say, gee, you know, we don't want to get something else because we don't want to admit that we can't make the wild card. I think it makes there are probably less than 50 percent of the teams that will even think mm -hmm. about trading players. So I think the trade market will be narrow. But if it's something like Cueto, it will be monumental. And uh, at, lastly, uh, do you think we get a show me state? series based on the records we see from St. Louis and Kansas City? And if not, which which teams in each respective divisions or leagues might crash that party halfway through? I think it's, I think it's possible. Um, I think the team that everyone in the National League is most worried about is Pittsburgh. Um, they are second only to the Cardinals in winning percentage, in run differential, they're moving up all the – they're getting better all the time. 
I, I just I think the Pirates are really dangerous. I think Pirates Cardinals uh, could easily end up the NLCS. So I think it would be a classic series, especially considering the last four games no doubt. of each team season is a four game series in Pittsburgh between the Cardinals and Pirates. So uh, first place is going that that makes the race really important because if the Cardinals end up the wild card, it's a totally different thing. They have to do the play in game. I mean, last year, the Pirates had the same one loss record and the same run differential exactly as the San Francisco Giants. The difference is Madison Bumgarner faced, faced them in the, mm. in the play in game. That would be that, that 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 was all she wrote. Any anybody who faced Madison Bumgarner last year. Hey Peter you know, in with, the, with the innings he pitched, excuse me, with, yeah, sure. the innings he pitched in that postseason and that's if you put that out over hundred and sixty two games, you would have thrown five hundred and seven innings. <laughs> Peter, you're the best. Thanks for chiming in, as always, on this show. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Rich. I appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. You bet. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.